what's up divas and divos it's your girl april so you guys already know what time it is it's real talk wednesday i was really trying my best to do real talk and so i'm glad i'm able to do that i wasn't sure if i was going to you guys know that i'm on vacation um, i don't really know if you want to call it vacation you know i came to new york to get my mom and also to see my husband my son my daughter-in-law who's having a baby and my grandson so this is just family time for me and so while my husband's at work i decided i would just go ahead and do real talk to you guys so i don't even have any makeup on i'm just going to be chilling you know this is like my last day here with him and then i go to new york city tomorrow on tuesday to get my mom and we fly back to phoenix arizona on wednesday which is the day this will air so it's rainy and it's gloomy out here which i'm really happy about because in arizona there aren't too many rainy days and it's not too many gloomy days either and it's always sunshine so when i see an opportunity for a gloomy day then i just like to chill so you know i don't have no makeup on but honeys okay let's just talk about this her real quick so in case you guys are wondering i did post a video to this wig which is from rpgshow.com not too happy that i didn't get so many views on it um because i did take a lot of time and effort to edit it but all alone not only that but to style it and you know show you guys how i achieved um just wearing it now um this hair is like amazing um today is monday and i did put this hair on last monday which was on the 9th of april so today is the 16th and i applied this wig on the 9th of april using only super tape right here and a little piece here and then the rest of this was the got to be clear gel so other than that i have not had to remove the wig it has stayed on i do have my ways of keeping it on at night so that way it's secure and i do have a video on my channel for that hopefully i'll remember to post that down below but you must definitely check out how i applied this wig because i did post how i applied this wig on youtube um for the actual rpg show video so the same way that i've applied it last week is the same way that i've been wearing it um for the whole week and that's also the same way that i have put it on in the video and i love this hair this is like one of my favorite units by them it's 20 inches 200 percent density it's um a red color on camera it's really not picking up as bright red because i do have like the monitor turned down a little bit because i don't want to get washed out y'all already know i'm already washed out looking so a bitch is not really trying to look so washed out but let's just get into this um as far as my vacation or my visit it has been going really really well um of course i do speak to the kids every single day so i do um enjoy myself when i come here plus i do miss my kids but let me tell y'all i get so happy when i see my husband like seriously um i get super duper happy when i see him um you know he is like the love of my life um and stuff so i just get really really happy when i see him um and i just don't want to leave so yeah my time spent here is like amazing but it's not long enough because i don't want to leave him but um you know i'll see him again in like two and a half weeks so yeah but so anyway yeah i'm having a great time i love seeing my my son and my grandson and my daughter-in-law we went out to eat and stuff i don't know if i've gained a couple of pounds since i've been here because he don't have no scale so you know maybe that's a good thing because i would have been like no i can't eat that but well, i have went to the chinese buffet twice because they don't really have no good chinese buffets in arizona i mean like they do but it doesn't taste the same so you know i do enjoy being here plus i just like to sit up with him and watch tv and eat snacks and stuff you know we be laughing he is like you know what I'm saying? it's not he is like he's definitely my best friend you know what i'm saying and he's just he's everything to me so i'm happy to be back here so we're gonna get into this real talk so that way um you know I don't waste too much of you guys' time. So, you guys already know what to do. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, you can definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people that's in your email, meaning if your name is April, but you don't want everybody to know that, you could definitely say, well, I've already changed the names. Sometimes people don't, and I assume that they did, and then I'll just um, leave it. Or sometimes I assume they didn't, and I'll change it. So, either way, it's up to you guys. But you can always send me an email to my lovers 2012 at gmail.com but my email address will also be listed in the description box below for you guys so you can also use that as well so let's get into this real talk you guys okay huh? 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 
So I love when people send me pictures because it's always nice to be able to put a picture with a face or a face with a picture or you know what I'm saying but I just like I, I just really do like that I'm, I never show the pictures because I just it's not what you're supposed to do um but she is so pretty this young lady is so pretty so let's get into this hey Mrs. April first let me start off by saying that I have been loving your channel since it was just you Philly Jams and Atiyah. So you know my wig, weave, and healthy hair game is popping. LOL. My situation, when she says, when she means just me, Atiyah, and Philly Jams, when we started out on YouTube, there weren't a lot of wig channels. It was Atiyah, and then it was me, and Philly Jams, and Love's Kisses 99, um, and then it was Desi's um, 1016. There wasn't really any wig channels. So now it's like saturated with people doing wigs, which I'm not, you know, knocking, but you know, everywhere you turn, somebody's grandparents are popping up with um wig channels somebody's dog got a wig on somebody's niece nephew you know got a wig on okay my situation is about my new relationship with this guy and his family you can call me k and him j it started when my co-worker said she had a cousin that was interested in me and though i usually don't do the friend hookup thing i said sure he can have my number being that i saw his instagram and he was handsome he's nice looking dressed decent dressed he had a job a nice car his own place and no kids lol i know i know that's sad jumping ahead we hung out on dates and everything was great well i'm getting to know him and i realized that he is very popular in his family he has 10 siblings on his dad's side and five on his mother's side and his siblings call and text all the time when we are together which is annoying because our time is precious due to our schedules being so different Here's a, he's a general manager of a restaurant, so he works 12-hour days, and I'm a crisis therapist, so I'm on call 24 hours a day. When we spend time together, his siblings and cousins call, text, or want to come over all times of the night, and his mom be in the mix of it too. I be like, oh my goodness, go away. He's so unfazed by it, and I can't deal. I feel like I'm dating and competing with his whole family, especially his mom. For example, she initially decorated his new apartment because he didn't care to do it. When he when he met me, he went we went shopping and he let me redecorate. Tell me why his mom bought some little pictures after me and him hung them up while he was at work because she has a key. Yes, a key. And the one in the kitchen says something like a mother's kitchen is blessed, etc. So basically, while his mom his mom has a key to Jay's apartment. Jay's mom has a key to his apartment. After Kay already redecorated, his mom found it, you know, to take it on to herself and go out and buy some new pictures to hang in his kitchen. And one of the pictures says, a mother's kitchen is blessed, etc. There was more to it. I was offended. I told him that I feel like he has too many people in our relationship and he is passive about it. What should I do? I'm so sorry it was so long. Much love from Texas. K. Well, so you guys already see K and J are kind of like newly at this relationship thing, I think. Um, maybe not so newly, but newly enough. Um, he's popular along his family lines. You know, he got his siblings. He got all together, it's like 15 of them, you know. He got 10 on his father's side, five on his mama's side. Then he got cousins and, you know, aunties and everybody else texting and calling and wanting to come out and hang out at his house. And when they're together, when K and J are together, their time is like, you know, kind of like limited because he works 12 hour shifts and she works. 24 hours you know she's on call because she works for a crisis center so the time that they do spend together i'm pretty sure that she wants it to just be them two and i i can totally get it even though i i'm not in that same predicament it's kind of like the same thing like when i come to new york i just want it to just be me and my husband and that's it though i still do have to spread myself out among my son because that is my son and i do need to see my grandson but i do want it to just be me and him um however sometimes it just doesn't work out like that and i i totally get it but i can understand how she feels because it's a constant 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 thing and sometimes you know you have to say things instead of just sitting back and not saying anything you definitely have to say things because even though you may say little things like oh my god why don't they just go away or don't they know we are spending time together oh my god those are more or less like little rants you know what i'm saying it's not like they're they're kind of like subliminal messages but it is a message but sometimes when you have situations like this, when you're just saying like little rants like, oh my God, I wish they'd go away or gang, don't they see we trying to spend time together? A man will hear that, but then they won't really hear it. They, it won't really phase them like that. So I feel like 
you need to kind of like you you really do need to have like a full on topic conversation about how it's making you feel as a person so take for instance you guys are out to dinner and he's getting a text message from one of his siblings and he's responding back to them or he's speaking to them on the phone when he's done with that phone call verbal phone call if he's talking on the phone if he's texting then you can interrupt him at any time i feel because it's a text message but you know you really need to let him know like hey you know jay I really appreciate the time that we spend together and when we're together I really wanted to just be us two because we don't really get to spend that much time with one another and the little bit of time that we do spend I really take it to heart like you know it means a lot to me and I just really would wish that sometimes you would just leave the phone and put it down and just let people know in your family that you you spending time with your girl you have company right now and that's not a good time you know that's one thing that i would definitely do because after a while all of that interruption and interrupting you and you trying to you know spend quality time with somebody but there's always somebody interrupting that shit can get a little bit overbearing and then it gets old after a while it's like you know what you need to just back the fuck up i mean i get it me for one i have kids so i can kind of totally relate to you because i do like to have me time even if my husband is not there i do like to have me time and then i do get in my moods where i just be like could you just leave me alone you know what i'm saying because it's like a constant thing you know somebody is always like knocking at my door calling me on my phone texting me and i get it all the time so it does get very overwhelming especially if you are looking forward to just being with someone alone so i can totally understand but the thing about his mom, you know, I don't feel like you competing with her. Um, and I, I wouldn't want you to feel that way. And I definitely, if it were me, I'm not trying to compete with nobody's mother. But, you know, that that is how some moms can be. Now, if it were me personally, you know, like I have I have decorated my um, my son's apartment when they lived in Arizona when him and his girlfriend and his son, they first came to live in Arizona. Like, I got all their furniture and stuff and I decorated the apartment. I set it up the way that I wanted it to set up. And, you know, that was how I wanted it to be. I, I don't know. It's just because it was their very first apartment and they really didn't know much. And then when I did come and I seen things kind of like discombobulated, rearranged, I kind of felt some type of way like you don't appreciate what I'm doing. However, I've never put anything in any one of my kids apartments saying a mother's kitchen you know what i'm saying that may be you know she may not be really meaning any harm by it because as a parent and especially when you have boys it seems like the mother is a little bit more clingier to the boys because girls are a little bit more mature at least some of them are you know what i'm saying listen i got five kids and i'm not saying they all mature but i have five of them five of them so sometimes the girls can be just as petty petty wop too okay but i feel like when it comes to a boy you know they don't have a lot of sense of decorating or putting together things just like you know well take my husband for instance he's not my child but he's my husband or he's my soon-to-be husband because we are divorced but when i came the first time i like was rearranging stuff and like we got to go get this and we got to go get that you know like put in not even like putting my own little niche on it but i wanted to make it really nice for him you know what i'm saying i did it again when i came back you know what i'm saying um it doesn't bother him because he likes what i do for him um and i have my own little stuff here too but I just feel like sometimes as a woman when we have like a, a, a child that's a, a, a boy or even a brother you know what I'm saying or a husband or a boyfriend we tend to like be a little bit more motherly to them you know what I'm saying and try to make them feel a little bit more comfortable so I really don't feel like it was his mother's intentions to hurt you per se but Having a key to his apartment can be a little bit kind of like, hmm, I would never want to be laid up in the bed here with my husband and then his mother walks in because because he gave her a key. She doesn't have a key, but I'm saying I, that would be a little bit on the embarrassing side. So I can totally understand how you feel about that because what is he to tell her well you can only come over here on certain days or maybe why does she have a key is it because she can just walk in your apartment or maybe she has a key just in case he loses a key i mean i don't know if it were me i don't know if i would give my mom a key to my place but then again i probably would because even after my daughter tati had moved out of my house in arizona she still had a key to my house to come in as 
when she ever she wanted to because that's my kid i mean i don't know it's a difference but you know i don't know if i would give my own mother a key to my house i mean and then again i probably would i probably would give my mom a key to my house but you know it's a difference it's a difference you know what i'm saying so i think for you you probably have to get a little bit more comfortable with his mom and don't take it as she's doing things intentionally to you but i do feel this this is the most important thing that you really really do need to take into consideration is to have a talk with jay because nothing's going to get resolved girl unless you speak up about it having little rants like oh my god won't they leave us alone and all. that's just like if that were me and if you were saying it to me i would take offense to that because it's like yo chill out that's my family you know what i'm saying um i understand how you feel then again i might not have said i understand how you feel but sometimes people take things a different way so always communication is the best to talk with anybody you know what i'm saying even if you feel like your communications may not really be that there with them i still feel like communicating with the person is always best and it's always the most important instead of having like little rants or tantrums like kids do because those are outbursts those are motherfucking outbursts and having outbursts do not work well at all outbursts will lead to some other shit and then he may feel like you don't like his mother he may feel like you don't like his siblings and his family members and then he may feel like you feel some type of way or he may feel like you feel you too good for them it, it can go into all different types of avenues so i think like just to spare anybody's feelings i would always say like you know what i'm saying talk to the person about it don't have rants and temper tantrums because we all grown here we don't need to have outbursts we have to speak our minds and speak our minds in a fashion that you would want him to come to you if the shoe was on the other foot you know what i'm saying because if it were you k and this was you in his predicament you wouldn't like it if he sat there and was like oh my god can't they leave us alone you wouldn't respect that because i know if he did some shit like that to me oh i'm not i'm not having it at all so i feel like to be more respectable to one another that is the best way to do it is to communicate and that way you guys have a better understanding so that way he knows more having temper tantrums and rants is not solving anything and it's not going to allow him to know your true feelings he's just going to feel like you mad at the time you know what i'm saying like yeah we do get all get fucking mad at the time but it's the way we go about it. Some people don't know how to, you know, be mad. Some people will take it to a whole different level, like onto social media, onto um, out in the streets. Like, you know what I'm saying? There are ways to be mad at people. Whether you know it or not, yeah, it's being mad, it's being angry, but there's a way that you present that shit. You don't have to go and make yourself and your family members or whoever you with look bad when you upset with them. There is a way to go about shit. When you grown and you mature, there's a way to handle shit. Straight up, just like that, no chaser. There's always a way to handle shit. So for me, if I were you, I would definitely have a conversation with him and let him know how you feel. So that way, that shit marinates in his motherfucking head. You know what I'm saying? Like, let it marinate, okay? Sometimes when we get upset, we don't realize how, you know, aggressive we can become as people. And I... I know this because I am not the best at communicating all the time. Sometimes when I get mad, I just lash out at you. You know what I'm saying? Whether y'all think it or not, I am a very aggressive person. And I try to change a lot about who I am over the past years. And it seems like when I have left this place, Schenectady, New York, and I moved to Arizona, my my whole way of thinking has changed a lot. Like, it has literally changed a lot. Not sometimes always for the best, because I can't come out of character and be old April, like, what? We could be, we could, what? We could get it popping. You know what I'm saying? Especially if I'm trying to defend me and mine, then I definitely can become old April. But I just feel like as we have grown and matured as adults, there are ways to handle shit. And like me and my husband, we have talked about so many different things. And you know, I've had my own situations, not with him, but like, you know, just with my kids in general. And he has told me, you know, you, we all know how you can get, but sometimes being that you're grown, you have to walk away from the shit and just leave it alone and let them continue being mad because you going back and forth with them is not going to resolve anything. And you know what? I had to stop and think about what he says, because this is me. If I don't get to say anything, like if I'm having a dispute with one of my kids, you know, the older ones, and um, I, I have to definitely say something because I feel like you're not about to punk me. I feel like if I don't say anything, they may feel like I'm a punk or some bitch. And I don't want anybody to feel that way to me. And I always say this to my husband. And he has to tell me, you know what? It ain't even that. 
You don't have to feel that way. It's you being a more mature adult and handling things the way you handle them. You ain't got to lower yourself down to their characteristics and be arguing back and forth with them because that's not making the situation any better. Go ahead and let them say what they want to say about you behind your back, to your face, whatever. You know what? But it becomes a thing where it's disrespect. And with disrespect, you have to handle it in a totally different fashion. So I have not always been like so level-minded or level-headed. You know what I'm saying? I have been through a lot in my lifetime too where you know I have to deal with shit and I have to take it into perspective of like okay April do you want to feel punked and you know what I'm saying and even like when you feel like oh I don't want to feel like a punk and not say nothing if you go on that rah-rah shit that shit can get you in trouble sometimes and a bitch like me ain't trying to go to jail I'm not saying that I'm scared of it and I ain't saying that I want to be there neither but you have to learn how to handle shit. And having temper tantrums and shit like that could lead to all different types of things. And especially if you like somebody, then there's a way to go about it. And I'm pretty sure you do like him or else you wouldn't be having a temper tantrum about him always, you know, communicating. Let him know this y'all time and you want to spend time with just him. You know what I'm saying? When it's just y'all time, all types of things could pop off that he can only fucking imagine, girl. You know what I'm saying? Like... Hmm. So have a talk with him and let him know how you feel instead of having a temper tantrum and exposing the one side of K that you really don't want him to see. Because, listen, honey, he's got it going on for himself, meaning he got a good job, he's got his own place, he's got a car, he's got money saved up, and he's a nice guy. Where are you finding that too many um, guys these days? Not saying that they all dogs, but we want to find the perfect ones sometimes. And sometimes they really are hidden treasures. And I'm going to tell y'all this, and we're going to move on to the next. Not saying mine's was always a gentleman and I'm not saying he wasn't because my husband's always been a gentleman he just had his problems and issues and we all do we have to deal with that shit but when you find someone that's good for you try to make it work and communicate as much as possible because communication is always the key we can't always be getting up in our feelings that's the problem with the world today everybody want to be up in their feelings and shit and then when you be in your feelings too much that should get exposed and then it leads to all different types of shit that you could avoid it Okay, so moving on to the next. All right, you guys, so this one right here, this real talk is probably going to piss me the fuck off, like to the utmost. So if y'all drink, get yourself some vodka, some wine, whatever the fuck you drink, smoke you some fucking um, ganja, and you know what I'm saying, pause the video because this one is not like, Y'all ready? Hey, April, you can call me Francis. I just want to say that you're so special to me. I watch you all the time with my daughter, and we love you. She thinks Mumsy's so pretty and is jealous of all the cute stuff she gets at the Dollar Tree. She says, Mommy, can we go to the Dollar Tree? LOL. I'm writing today about my man. We've been together for 13 years and are not married. He's my daughter's father, and, and, and everything to begin with was great. Over the years, he started to beat me. Right after my daughter was born, maybe just once in a blue moon, but then over time, it became more and more often. To begin with, it would just be punches to my face. Hot coffee poured over me. And if he made dinner and I wasn't saying how delicious it was, he would smash my head into the plate a number of times till my face was covered in gravy. I felt so ashamed. He would then laugh and push me to the ground. He always waited till my daughter wasn't around. I didn't feel like I even knew him anymore. It was like I didn't know him from a hole in the wall. In December, when my daughter was at a sleepover, he threw me down the stairs, then pulled me back up and threw me down again and kicked me until I coughed up blood. I had to go to the emergency room and said that I fell down the stairs, but I think they knew something was up. Since then, he said he's going to get some help, but when he went to one of the meetings last month, he flipped a chair over and the police were called. I had to go and pick him up from the cops. I was so scared, but I knew in my heart that he was a good man. Anyway, now we're in April. Yesterday, he said he didn't like my new outfit my mom gave me as a birthday present. So he ripped it up and threw it in the trash. Last night, he waited until I was asleep and then punched me in the stomach in my own bed. What should I do, April? I was so scared of the man. I'm so scared of the man I once loved. I cook and clean and go to work and I'm so tired when I get home, but that doesn't stop him from hurting me. I know I should leave, but how do I go about it? 
I have $3,000 saved in a separate account, but that won't get me that far. My mom said I could stay with her till I'm settled, but how do I explain it to my daughter? What if he goes for full custody of her? Plus, my mom is already in a bad way because my dad recently passed away. I was so devastated but wasn't allowed to go to the funeral. My man locked me in the house and said he never liked my father anyway. I don't want to put stress on my mom. I wish I lived nearer to you because I think you smashed his punk ass into I think you would smash his punk ass into next week. And I don't have any friends anymore. Thanks so much, April. You're the light of my bad days. You always put a smile on my face, along with my daughter, who is the reason why my heart beats. You know what's so horrible about this? That Frances is not the only woman that goes through this. And it's so sad to say, like, you know what I'm saying? That she can say that it all started with a punch to my face. What fucking man goes around punching women in the face? Pouring hot coffee on her, smashing her face into the plate of food that he cooked because she didn't say it was delicious, throwing her down the steps and then picking her up and throwing her back down, pushing her down, laughing at her, ripping her new clothes up, locking her in the house so she doesn't attend her father's funeral because he never liked him. And on top of that, so he goes to a domestic violence meeting because I'm pretty sure that was the one he was going to. And he can't even control his temper in there to where he's flipping over chairs and he's he's being escorted by the police out and being arrested. Let me tell you something, Francis. First of all, honey, I wouldn't have even went down to get his motherfucking ass from the police station. That nigga would have had to stay there. But you know what? Here's the thing. Some women feel like they need a whole lot of money to get saved, to be saved up in order to get away from their um, their, their husbands and boyfriends who beat on them. You know what I'm saying? You don't need no fucking money. Okay? Let's get this, let's get this out the picture. It's good. It's it's always good to have money in your pocket. I get that. We all want to have money in our pockets. Who the fuck don't? But I'm gonna tell y'all bitches what. If I'm getting beat the fuck on like that, I'm not about to sit around. I don't give a fuck if I'm broke and got a dollar to my motherfucking name. I'm going to carry my happy broke ass down to the police station and I'm going to let them know, listen, I got this nigga here at the house who keep beating on me and I don't got nowhere to go, all right? This is what I keep telling y'all bitches. Stop allowing these men to control y'all lives and beat on you. I get it. You love him, but he don't fucking love you. If he loved your ass, then he wouldn't be throwing hot coffee on you, punching you in your face. This is what you call a foul ass nigga. He motherfucking foul and grimy. He wouldn't go do that to some real man. He wouldn't go do that to no man on the street. I would like to see him try, okay? And then, but you have to keep going on. Y'all been together for 13 years and you got a baby with him. I don't know how old your daughter is because you said this shit started right after that. But let me tell you something. The first time you punch me to my motherfucking face, nigga, you better hope you wake the fuck up the next morning because I'll be damned if you about to punch me in my shit. But let's just keep it real. You be leaving out in handcuffs. Punch, punch me in my motherfucking face and pour hot coffee on me. And throw me down the steps. Yes, bitch. Yes, Francis. When you went to the hospital and you was coughing up blood and you told them that you fell down the steps, bitch, yes, they knew that you got pushed down the steps by your man. This is nothing new to people at the emergency room with battered women, okay? They know the fucking signs. Now, here's the thing, sweetheart. And I have said this in many videos, and I'm going to say it again. When you have a child and you stay in a domestic violence situation... And you don't do anything about it, meaning you don't leave the man and you continuously live there with your child. It's called child neglect. And Child Protection Services, CPS, will take your child from you because they call it child neglect and because you didn't do anything about it. Yes, I know you're the one that's getting battered and beat on. However, you had every option in the book to leave. Even if you only had two options, which was to go to a shelter or go to the police station. You had an option. Now, $3,000 is a lot and it's enough, okay? It's more than enough. I, for one, wouldn't even go to my mother's house. You know why? Because he's going to know where to find you. So why would you even go to your mother's house? If he's locking you in your own house because he doesn't like your father and you couldn't um, attend his funeral, what makes you think he's not going to go to your mama's house? This nigga is out of control. He don't have no fucking cutoff switch. He don't have no motherfucking barrier. He don't give a fuck about nobody but himself. And he really don't give a fuck about himself, okay? So this is what I'm going to tell you. You can either go to a church. You can go to the Department of Social Services. You can go to the police station. You can go to children and family services. You can go to the hospital. And you can go to the fire department. You can go to um, the YMCA. 
Now, I've told you guys this before. Uh, before my husband came along, I was in a situation like this. I wasn't getting punched in the face, but there was enough going on, like, you know, domestic violence. And um, what happened was his family didn't like me no more because I wasn't putting up with that shit. So they called, you know, CPS and lied on child or lied to CPS and said that I don't have any food and any furniture in my apartment. I didn't have any furniture. I had a bed for me and my son and I had a TV and I had some pots and pans and some bowls, two bowls, two plates, two forks, two spoons. I had just enough and I had food in my refrigerator. When CPS came to my home and they told me that they had a call saying that I was not feeding my child and I already knew where it came from, I, I informed them. You know what they offered me? You know, because I was living in Utica, New York at the time. We can offer you a place to stay at the women's shelter because living on the same block with them is not safe for you. So I went with them that same motherfucking night to the YWCA, which is, you know, sister sisters um, to the YMCA. And it's the domestic violence shelter. The YMCA and the YWCA has a domestic violence shelter for women and children. And I went and I stayed at this shelter. And it wasn't like a shelter like you probably can imagine in your head. It's like a shelter shelter, like people sleeping on cots. It was nothing like that. Um, it all depends on the house sizes. But each house that is owned by the YMCA and the YWCA for domestic violence, women and fitting children, they have houses. And each woman have their own rooms, especially if they have um, more than one child or if they have ch one child, they have their own room with their child and they help these women. OK, so they help you. They help you relocate. They help you find furniture. They help you get assistance and food stamps, social services, Medicaid, uh, an apartment and everything you may need. OK, and this is what they did for me. And this is how I ended up living in Schenectady. OK, because I left from New York City to go live in Utica with this asshole. And then this is how I ended up in Schenectady. OK, by leaving and going to the shelter with them. And then I stayed at that shelter for like three or four months. And then um, I was relocated to the shelter in Schenectady because it was my choice. I didn't want to go back to New York City because I just couldn't afford it. It, but I knew that Schenectady was a lot closer to my mom, like an hour and a half, two hour um, ride on the bus. So this was like so helpful to me. Like when I say beyond helpful, this was so, so helpful. And, you know, it was so crazy because at the time when I did go into the shelter, I probably had like a few dollars to my name. I didn't um, work as much. I had a job at Toys R Us and it was a seasonal job. And I do remember it was cold outside. And um, I think the job probably had ended because Christmas was over. So I don't even think I had a job anymore. I know I was getting food stamps and stuff. And I think they was paying my rent. I, I can't remember if I was paying the rent or if they were paying the rent. I can't really remember. Um, meaning social services. But I didn't have money in my pocket. And I went to the shelter. They provide everything for you. Even if you don't have clothes. If you have to leave with the clothes on your back. Honey, child. Organizations like Target and Walmart and Kohl's and Sears and Kmart and all kind of companies that you can only imagine donate to these places, to these battered women's shelters, you know what I'm saying? So you don't need to have money. Never feel like you are stuck in a place because you don't have the funds to get out of the situation. What do you mean, Francis, when you talk about, what am I gonna tell my daughter if we were to leave and go live with my mother? What do you think your daughter is witnessing? Even if he's not doing it around your daughter, do you think that that's right? Because you may not think that it's being seen by your daughter, and she may not see it, but I'm pretty sure she may hear things and she may feel the tension in the air. And that's not fair to her neither. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not fair to her. She is a child and for one she is a, a girl and being around something like that is only showing your child that it's okay and it's acceptable to let a man beat on you you know what i mean sometimes we have to not worry so much about what our children will think if we leave their father because if it's definitely toxic for them we have to explain to them later on down the road you know what i mean sometimes people like to tell you don't tell your kids anything or don't don't tell your kids or don't bash your your child's parent to them. It's not bashing. You know what I'm saying? It's not bashing. Bashing is, oh, your father, he's an asshole. All he do is cheat. He ain't got no job. He ain't got no That's bashing. However, we're leaving because it's not safe for us to be there anymore. You know, daddy doesn't know how to stop hitting on mommy and it's not safe for us to be there anymore. That's all you got to tell her. She's going to learn either way. Of the situation people talk okay she gonna learn that you know what it's not safe for us and mommy is right 
your child don't need to be put in that situation and neither do you three thousand dollars honey is more than enough okay like i said shit is provided for you hopefully i can remember to put like some domestic violence phone numbers down below in a box in a description box but if i don't those who do know like domestic violence situations and numbers and information please put it in the comments section because Frances is not the only woman that we have on this channel who is getting beat on. And I say that because I have gotten many emails with battered women. And I'm pretty sure that I have gotten, I have not gotten many emails that they've been beaten and been, you know, abused. Being abused is a horrible thing. And life is short. If you think that man loves you, then you have to look up the word love. Because being beaten and ridiculed and humiliated is not a form of love, okay? That's definitely not a form of love. And I wish you did live near me, Francis. I really do because my door would be open to you, okay? And I definitely wouldn't let you go back home to a situation like that. You know that old saying, home is where the heart is. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all have heard that. Home is where the heart is. That's where it is. When you go home, you're supposed to feel safe. That's supposed to be your safe zone. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be where you are loved and you can relax. Not where you're fearing for, the, for your life. I'm pretty sure that Frances feels like when she go to work, that's the place that she feels safe to ask. Let me tell you something, girl. Even if you don't want to call the YMCA or the police station, sweetheart, you got people at your job. I will go to my human resource department and let them know what's going on with me because things that affect you personally can definitely affect your job. And I get it. That's your job. You may not want to relocate, but I'm sure this motherfucking ninja know where you work at. You don't want him popping up at your job and embarrassing you. And I'm pretty sure that your job would be more than happy to help you get out of the situation. And also maybe help you relocate if there are other companies that are working with them or help you just give you a good resume and a fresh start. But sweetheart, let me tell you something. As long as you sit around in a situation, it's not going to get no better for you. It's never going to get better. And if you feel like him going to classes is going to work, that shit ain't going to work. Look how he acts in class. This nigga having a temper tantrum like a two-year-old. Like, who the fuck does that? A grown-ass man. Like, you a grown-ass man and you going around punching on women and pouring hot coffee on you. And then going to laugh about the shit like it's funny. Who the fuck finds that funny to be pouring hot coffee on a woman? Let me tell you, if you was to pour some motherfucking hot coffee on me, nigga, you, you about to... Let a motherfucker pour some hot coffee on my black ass and watch what the fuck happens. That's all I'm going to say. I can't say you're going to die. I'm not, I can't say you're going to live. But just watch what the fuck happens because I'm not going to sit there and take that shit too lightly. Nigga, we not supposed to do that. Okay? This is one thing that I do not play with. I have been through enough in my lifetime to where, you know what, it's great to be in a relationship. But if that person can't respect you and they can't be loving to you and they can't be, you know, comforting and respectable, then you don't need to be in a relationship. And it seems like you have a low self-esteem because you still stay. You love him. You may love him. But, sweetheart, you don't even love yourself enough. Because if you loved yourself enough, you would have been left that predicament. It all started with a punch in the face and it's going to get worse. That nigga might kill you. How do you know that one time... It could take one time for him to throw you down the steps. Girl, you could crack your head open. You could snap your neck. And then who your daughter got left? Your daughter don't have nobody but this asshole father of hers. And what makes you think that he going to treat her any better than he's treated you? You know what I'm saying? Let's be realistic. What makes you think he's going to treat her any better than he's treated you? You his wife. Or not even his biological, his, his like wife on paper. But you had his daughter. Y'all been together for 13 years and this is how he respects you? That nigga don't love you. Mm -mm. He don't love you at all. He don't even love himself. And he damn sure don't love his daughter because that's his daughter's mother. How could you treat somebody like that? How could you treat anybody like that? How could you allow somebody to treat another person like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, if that was his mother, I wonder how he would feel. And then it's so fucked up because her dad passed away and he locked her in the motherfucking house so she couldn't go to her own father's funeral. Bitch, I would have climbed out that motherfucking window and that would have been the last time you see my black ass. For real. You ain't about to be locking me in no fucking house. And then you ripping up clothing. You fucking smashing my face in a plate of gravy. Like, come on, man. That is like the utmost disrespect I could imagine. Punching you in your face. Like, throwing you down the steps. To throw anybody down the steps is like, okay, you better watch it. You know what I'm saying? Imagine if you just had a fight with just a regular bitch on the street, y'all tussling, and you throw that bitch down the, street, the steps. I would be scared for one to throw anybody down the steps. I wouldn't give a fuck if it was my worst enemy or a bitch I didn't like because you don't know what could take on that, through that tumble down the steps. That bitch could go into a coma, and here I go with the fucking cuffs behind me like, bitch, you going to jail. 
That nigga don't give a fuck about shit. Look how he acting up in a fucking domestic violence class. And who the fuck even put him in a class? Normally, nine times out of ten, when a man has to go to a class for, um, um, beating on women, battery, um, domestic violence. That's because either the court them put his ass there, the police, or whoever. He didn't just go on his own. So, you see, he has been probably arrested or had some type of involvement with the police for domestic violence because he's already in a class for it. That's a class that is mandatory to take sometimes to avoid jail time. Let me just tell y'all bitches this. If y'all is being beaten the fuck on by your man, Sweethearts, don't sit around because you ain't got no money in your pocket. It don't take no money to get the fuck away. There are organizations out there that will fucking help your asses. Let's just keep that real. The first one that I would definitely call is the YMCA. But number one, the very first one that I definitely would call because you have a child is I would call Children and Family Services, CPS. I definitely would. I would call the um, CPS hotline, the 1-800 hotline. And even though you are the person calling about the incident that's going on, you're protecting yourself. And then what will happen is They'll come to your home or to your job and they'll help you and they'll bring you to a safe place, a safe haven. So for me, I would definitely call Children and Family Services, you know what I'm saying? Because that's how I got involved with the whole situation with the YMCA. Um, for those who don't have um, children, then I would definitely call like the YMCA or, and, and then I also will call like a crisis hotline because they can also point you in the right direction. But... It's not safe for you guys to stay in that situation, so I definitely will go either like to the police station, or if you don't really want to get the police involved, you can definitely go to the lo your local hospital because they will also help you. But number one, Francis, I think the first thing that you should do is call Children and Family Services and let them know your situation because they will do an intake and they will come and get you and then they will take you and your daughter and they will help you and, um, and bring you to somewhere where it's safe and you can start your life over. But number one, I wouldn't go to my mother's house because that's where he's going to come find you. So I definitely would avoid going to my mom's house. And I would probably, me personally, sometimes you have to relocate because, you know, it's just that it's safe. And if you think that he's going to get custody of your daughter... Honey, everything is documented. You think that him acting like a fucking two-year-old at the goddamn domestic violence case um, class wasn't documented? Bitch, that shit was documented all day. You got records of him at the police station that you had to pick him up for documentation. All of this is documented. If he's lucky, he'll get supervised visits, okay? He might not even get that. Most of the time, they get um, order protections for you and the child, and they can't see the child for like a year or whatever, but they still have to pay child support. At that point, you know, some people don't even want child support. I wouldn't blame me if you didn't, but I would definitely call Children and Family Services. That would be my first, first thing to do and get you some help. Trust me, only $3,000? Bitch, that's more than enough. That's more than some people have. Like, what I had was nothing. And I came a long, long way. And let me tell you something, being punched in the face, it's not cool. It's not fun. It's not like something that you want to go through. And having hot coffee poured on you, I can't even imagine. You know what I'm saying? I've never had to endure anything like that. I don't even like hot grease being popped on me. So being someone that had to sit there and endure hot coffee poured on me, and then putting your face in your plate like a dog, that's like what you would do to an animal. And you wouldn't even do that to an animal because that's animal cruelty. You know what I'm saying? That's animal cruelty as well. So, my dear, I hope you take my advice and all the ladies' and advice in the actual um, comments below and take heed to it because this nigga is not going to love you any more than you love yourself. And even if you love yourself a million times, this nigga's not going to. So, why even sit around waiting? He's not going to change, sweetheart. And I'm sorry that you love him. You know, it's hard to pick and choose who we love sometimes, but I'm sorry that you have to feel like you love him and put up with this bullshit, but he don't love you. And sometimes we got to learn to love ourselves before we can allow anybody else into our lives. You feel me? So on that note, I'm going to go because, you know, it's almost time for my husband to be here. I love you guys. Stay diva and diva delicious. Make sure you leave any type of information you have on domestic violence down in the comment box for our diva and yeah you guys i will see you back in arizona so yeah huh? 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 What? Yeah. 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 Yeah.